plaintiff, Tiffany Shankin, has four children with the defendant, and they were married until the defendant went through a midlife crisis and asked for a divorce out of the blue. Tiffany's suing her ex for an unpaid bill and stimulus money. Defendant Bradley Schenken admits he was unhappy in his marriage, but says it was because Tiffany didn't care about his feelings, and she drove a wedge between him and his family. Bradley claims Tiffany is suing for more than he owes. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Um, Brad and I got married in 2014. We have four amazing daughters together. Um, things were going good. Um, before the summer of 2019, Brad came home, um, said that he wanted a divorce, kind of caught me off guard. That's not true. Did he say why? He said he was unhappy, and that's kind of all that he gave. Um, I would say it's more of a midlife crisis right afterward. He went and got himself a motorcycle two weeks after saying he wanted a divorce. And I was four months pregnant at that time as he was divorcing with, with our last child. In October, I went ahead and filed a status quo against him and made it where he couldn't financially abandon me or the children. That meant that the household bills had to still be maintained as if we were married and carried through until the divorce was finalized. Um, around November, Mr. Shankin had lost his job and we fell behind on some bills. The judge had told him that he knew that he needed to pay the, the bill for the status quo. He acknowledged it. He was supposed to make a good faith payment towards it. He gave me the $30 to go towards it and then I was to wait for the tax money to come in to take care of everything. Okay, let me allow him to give me some background. He might want to tell me about the relationship which you characterize as him just walking away at some point. Sir, what do you want to tell me? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so if I can just go back from the beginning there. So uh, Tiffany and I, we were high school sweethearts. We were together for a number of years. Uh, we did get married. We do have four amazing girls together. Um, however, there was always ups and downs within our relationship, even previous to the marriage. Um, whenever there was things that would bother me in our marriage and in our relationship, when I would try to talk to her about them and say, you know, these, this is bothering me, we should work on something like this. I would get made to feel that you don't need to be feeling that way. That's stupid and silly that you're feeling the way that you do. You shouldn't be letting this bother you and just try to turn it around to where I was the one who was feeling sorry for even bringing What type up. of things, if you don't mind? I just want to see how reasonable you are. Uh, there, there was, I mean, what a big thing is, you know, she tried putting a wedge between me and my own family. Um, there's a family member of mine that she always That's had a problem true. with. That's not true. Let him finish, ma'am. And, you know, it, it was always, whenever there was a problem with this individual person, didn't matter what I was doing, where I was, what time of the day it was, it was, you need to stop everything you're doing and you need to get this addressed right now. Okay, why don't you just say no? And hey, was, every wife says that. Me and, <laughs> well, I mean, trying to be a, a respectable husband and seeing my wife's side of things at the time, I, I wanted to hear her out as to why she felt yeah, these things. Being a respectful husband doesn't mean you got to be a chump. No, true. Yeah, she tell you, drop what you're doing right away and go and get it. I ain't doing nothing. Matter of fact, I'm not going to do it at all now that you got that tone in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> you should say. <laughs> now, if she start calling your names, you just walk away. Yeah. You can't fuss with well, themselves. You know, I'm trying to give you some for the next marriage. Oh, you brought y'all, but I'm going to put y'all back together. Both y'all smiling. So, y'all no, got these no, four no, kids. No, 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 yes, you are. Me, yes, you are. No. I'm putting y'all back you, together. And, um, yeah, you, so I'm just it, telling you what to do in the future. She can't fuss with herself. Either you just say that, I'm not doing a thing. Or you just look at her. When she start fussing, you just keep looking. At some point, she's going to stop. Because there's no inter there's no bag of Not likely with her, Your Honor. All right, go ahead. So, um, <laughs> so when when I got to a point to where I was coming home on a daily basis and not being happy, um, so I had seek uh, professional help 
and was talking with my doctor about things that were going on in life. And he had suggested, um, you know, why don't you try marriage counseling? And I felt good about that, leaving that appointment. On my way home, I called her to tell her about it. And instantly, I'm not going to spend money on someone to have an unbiased opinion when it's just something we should be able to fix on our own. And I asked her, I said, well, then let's fix it on our own. And then nothing got done. Um, even to the point of I, I obtained um, places for marriage counseling that would accept the insurance that I had. I, she made one phone call and it was, they won't work around this time. I can't get this time off of work. And that was it. Was she working? There was never any uh, effort that, how many hours a week was she working? Uh, she was a stay at home mother, your honor. Ma'am, he said uh, he tried marriage counseling. He asked that you all go. He gave you a list of places to call and you didn't. What do you say to that? That's a lie. He gave me a recommendation from his doctor that he gave. I called them. They didn't take the insurance. I tried calling around to other places and couldn't find someone to take the insurance. And when I explained to him what the cost was going to be, it was, I don't know, you need to figure it out. And you all don't have a pastor that you give your money to? <laughs> I mean, we did. You do? <laughs> yeah, we, we did. Why, did you go to the pastor for counseling? Nope. I, I tried going to my pastor. Uh -huh. and talking with him about it privately. And? Um, but it was never something that I told her that I did and tried to. Right, well, see, and that's what, in my opinion, that's what clergy, uh, it's one of the responsibilities I think clergy should uh, have. And if they, if the church is too large for them to do it personally, then they should certainly have a counseling ministry uh, that will uh, help their membership. Um, you know, that's two of the things that I'm kind of sensitive about uh, with clergy is uh, helping the uh, youth, the children of the single mothers who are giving them all their money. A single mother raising four boys, as my mother did, giving 10 percent of the church, kind of kept us in the housing projects. And, however, her faith applied to me and my brothers allowed us to overcome many of the things. So the church did work well for me uh, until I uh, went to the sixth, seventh grade where I went on the wow. But those values were in me. So I give the church credit and my mother for her faith. But the clergy should have been counseling with me. The clergy should have had some programs at that church to keep me occupied so that my single mother could continue to work and provide. And then when marriages we're on the rocks and you all need counseling. The clergy should be there or their ministry. So that's why I asked that question. And that's why I wanted to bring that to the attention of the viewers. And so that's that's my lecture about responsibility that I think clergy should have. And it may have saved you all's marriage. Hmm. Not going to blame the preacher for y'all divorce. Not going to blame your preacher for your divorce, but when you went to talk to him, that's when he should have said, bring your wife in. You see what I'm doing? I'm ordering y'all to get married. No. I ain't counseling or nothing. I'm, I'm telling y'all, you're getting back together. Then you hear me say, oh, <laughs> I ain't want no counseling, no nothing. You're getting back together. Them kids, got no, them four you. kids. You going to leave because of a motorcycle. Go ahead. You want to ride around on the motorcycle. Let him ride around on the motorcycle and play young. I see he want to be young. He is in the midlife crisis. Wearing the beard like James Harden, the, bas the pro basketball player. He got the slick shirt on. That's a nice shirt. Yeah, I agree with you. But just let him go on ahead. He going to wear himself out in a few years. <laughs> He'll be home. You'll be pushing him out in a minute. <laughs> You'll be like, go on, just go, just go, just go. Yeah, so this little midlife crisis will last a good two years, and you'll be pushing him out the door after that. So, but nonetheless, you all contemplate that. Please do. And let's get to the bill you're suing him about. Um, so when the stimulus money first came out, he gave me my $1,200. Um, when we filed taxes, we filed married for this last round, and the money got deposited into his account. So he had to bring the money to me. And he sent me my $1,200. And then when I asked about the children's money, I was told I already spent it. And I said, 
what do you mean? And then it went into, well, I believe I'm entitled to all the money because I was awarded the taxes during our divorce. And I explained to him that taxes have nothing to do with the COVID stimulus relief. It, it's not an advancement of your tax money by any means. It's to help with the pandemic that's going on. Yeah, but the uh, taxes have <laughs> everything to do with it. They give the money based on the tax returns. That's how they determine how, whether you're eligible. And that's how they determine who's, who has the responsibility for the children and their finances based on but, who filed and who was able to deduct. We both filed together, though. All right. So that money I, should have been split between the two households. His house isn't more important than my house, and we have a 60-40 custody agreement. So I should have received technically 60% of the money while he received 40% for the children. And someone's going to show me some evidence, hopefully, of the divorce decree, because that spells everything out. What do you say to the, the uh, allegation that you should split this money with her because uh, you all split custody? Uh, and secondly, uh, the unpaid cable bill. When I lost my job at the end of 2019, um, we did fall behind on some of the bills. And it was ordered in the divorce decree that I was to bring um, a couple bills up to current, and then as well as this cable bill that is delinquent. Um, mm -hmm. Also in the divorce decree, um, we were to assume all of our own debts. And because I was the breadwinner and she was a stay-at-home mother, all the debts that we had collectively were only in my name. So I got stuck with all of the debt. I got stuck with the vehicle. I got stuck with um, the house that I'm still paying for, which she and you know my children are living in. So when in 2020, the taxes were filed for the 2019 year. First of we all, who has the in. court order? Who has the divorce decree? Anyone in the evidence that I have? Uh, uh, I, I have it here, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, and what page might the page financial nine. order be on? Page 14, Your Honor. Line 45 is where it goes over the taxes. Okay. And so you tell me first, and then I'll read and interpret. Okay. So the taxes were filed uh, because we were still married. Um, going forward for 2020 and on, it says that uh, we shall file our taxes individually going forward and that I am awarded to claim all four of our children until Tiffany has a W-2 income of a specific dollar amount or more each year. And with it stating, stating that this stimulus relief is for the year 2020, if I'm getting to claim all four of the kids, then I felt that I was entitled to have that child credit. And the reason they put the $20,000 stipulation, ma'am, is that they're suggesting that since he has all the responsibility, he should receive any benefits. Pretty much the saying the court's the order. 20, mm -hmm. the only re I'm sorry. The only reason the $20,000 was put in there was to make up for the fact that he got stuck with the lease at the time. And that was just a way of saying, hey, sorry, you got stuck with this. We're kind of giving you this to make up for that situation. Mm -hmm. So that way he would have money. Okay. You have anything to show me that that's what the judge's rationale was? You have the transcript where the judge says all that? Or is that no, just your no, interpretation? Or are you speaking for the judge? <laughs> that was uh, figured out during mediation, so it wasn't even... You have transcripts from room. that? Or no, any notes from it? No, I don't. Okay, that's your... You were interpreting what the judge meant. And <clears throat> I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to go with my interpretation of what the judge wrote. And as such, I'm going to grant you the $362 for the unpaid bill and dismiss the COVID money because it was very clear that any uh, monies awarded as a result of tax refund is all his. This goes precisely to the to the tax filings. And once again, they said until you make $20,000 a year, he's able to claim all of those children. And then once you do make 20000 a year, you can claim two and he can claim two. That's what it says, and I'm going to go with what the judge says. $362 is your judgment. Have a good day.